Hi, welcome back to my channel. I finally have merch. Me, I do. Uh, you, you don't and you can't get it. Uh, you can't buy this anywhere. This was a gift from my sister and her partner. Look at how dumb it looks. I look like a fucking idiot wearing this. I love it and I will never wear it in public because holy shit. I'm gonna put this sweatshirt on cause it's a little chilly in here and uh, I don't wanna have to stare at my full legal name the whole time I'm making this video. And now it's merch for someone named James's uh, sandwich shop. I'm not gonna say the name of the person who this video is about because it feels like anytime anyone anywhere says his name, he gains power. You know, like how popular things gain popularity when people talk about them. Anyway, I figured it would be fun to play a little game of charades so that I don't have to actually say the name, but you at home will know the name and then everyone's on the same page. Okay, here we go. Great, you got it. Now we all know this person's name and there's no way anyone is confused. He describes himself as American. American flag. Sweet, we have something in common. Free speech radicalist. I use free speech too. It's pretty tight. Jeremiah 2911. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Dude, I fucking love Drake too. And then he has his business email. I'm assuming it's for people to hire him to be their token person of color at a Trump rally. This self-described free-thinking caramel frappuccino is most popular on TikTok and Instagram, um, where he makes TikToks like this. White light is made up of a bunch of different colors on the visible light spectrum. The word white functions as a color in every language that I speak. So stop being racist towards white people and excluding them. White people are people of color. And like this. Dear President Trump, Americans are rooting for you today. We are so thankful for your past four years of leadership. Thank you for coming in and working for citizens. You didn't have any donors to worry about. You didn't bow to transnational corporations or mobs like BLM. You led. After the country being led by followers for so long, you came in and you acted as a leader. But he also has Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube because let's be honest, why limit your bad takes to just one platform? And because most people have seen some of his TikToks or they've seen a part of some of his TikToks stitched to another one, uh, I wanted to focus on his YouTube channel and his Facebook page because holy shit, when he has the time to say whatever he wants, he says whatever the hell he wants. So the first thing you need to understand about the loony left is it's all about groupthink mobs. Yes, the left. The left has rallies for their presidential candidate where everyone cheers on his every move. The left has created a conspiracy theory about how one man will set us all free and restore the American way. That's, that's the left. They place you in these prisons, LGBTQ, immigrants, Silicon Valley, Wall Street. He makes an almost identical point in a video that I want to get to later. The left runs itself on locking people into group think like mobs, whether that be you're black, you're LGBTQ, you're an immigrant, you're part of Silicon Valley. And in both videos, he brings up Silicon Valley like it's a part of someone's intrinsic identity. You're Asian, you're allergic to peanuts, you're 5'11". You work at Dunkin' Donuts forever. That's part of you and it always will be. The best is, 
if you're just a white liberal and you don't have a minority badge to pledge around, I'm black and I'm proud. If you're just white, you have to be like, I'm a white ally and I support. And it's like, can we just talk about thought processes? Can we just discuss policy? We totally could. We totally could do that. But you've chosen to make the first minute of your video not about policy, but about your grievances with the way people present their identity. There is a frustrating amount of politics, especially on the national stage, that is not at all about the things that you want to put into place and the language of policy, but about fucking who knows what. You know, leaders have their talking heads on news shows and their super PACs, uh, and I get to make fun of the theater of it all. You want dumb theater? Look at this woman who's bringing a gun to Congress. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm a newly elected Congresswoman from Colorado. Even though I now work in one of the most liberal cities in America, I refuse to give up my rights, especially my Second Amendment rights. And she wasn't even one of the people who stormed the Capitol. She's an elected official. She was supposed to be there. First of all, very cool. Second of all, what's she gonna do with it? Is she gonna shoot somebody? Because that's still a crime. Is she gonna shoot a bill she doesn't like? Because they can just go print off another one. It accomplishes literally nothing. But certain people will see it and go, oh yeah. They really represent me. So let's get into the French Revolution. First of all, it's really important to understand that the French Revolution and the American Revolution should be antonyms in the dictionary. The American Revolution was a bunch of intellectuals coming together and declaring themselves free from England. We wrote it out in the Declaration of Independence. The French Revolution was as if criminals from Guantanamo Bay took over the country. Imagine if all the insane BLM protesters were running around tearing statues down and decapitating people. Oh wait, they're already doing half of that. I find the people who refuse to literally say the words Black Lives Matter when referring to the group of people, not even like as a personal statement that they believe in, but to refer to another group of people, I find those people particularly hilarious. I'm all for a good initialism, you know, uh, NRA, HGTV, uh, YMCA, you know, I don't wanna have to say Microsoft National Broadcast Company every time I wanna talk about where Steve Kornacki works. But the people who only ever say BLM and they never actually say Black Lives Matter. Oh, BLM? Hi, I don't support BLM. BLM's a mob. Or if you're me, you say, hi, BLM's a radical terrorist organization. I feel like they're afraid that if they say it, they're gonna like, they're gonna say Black Lives Matter and they're gonna say it and they'll hear it and they'll go, oh, that makes sense. Fuck. Or if you're me, you say, hi, BLM's a radical terrorist organization and you get fired from your job. It's a different type of decapitation than in the French Revolution, clearly, but nevertheless, if we keep moving down this route, it's a scary path. Yeah, if we run people out of the public eye for racism or transphobia or being chill with Nazis, what's gonna happen to the perfect pristine society we live in right now? And my favorite political pundit made me do this. I want you to go on an Ivy League college, any of the Ivy Leagues, and simply look up their courses. Look up courses on the French Revolution. They don't wanna teach the French Revolution because they know that's exactly what we're doing today. The liberal professors would see themselves too much in the mob. If zero Ivy League schools taught courses on the French Revolution, I'd be shocked. I, I wouldn't believe it. But then I did Google it and okay, there's one from Harvard, there's one from Yale, and there's one from Princeton. I just don't know why you would tell a lie that takes literally four words and Google to prove is a lie. If you're gonna use a lie to prove your point, at least make it something difficult to fact check. You know, tell me that in 1987, a group of radical communist Democrats took over a McDonald's in Duluth 
to try and frame the McDonald's Corporation for tax fraud. That would be so cool that I wouldn't even Google it to see if it was true or not. I would just believe it. So that's one of his first videos on YouTube. Uh, you get the tone of it. And I think it's fair to say that in general, they're not nice. And that's okay. I mean, I've only really made one video that could be considered to be nice, but I back my mean things up with evidence. I definitely wanna check in with him again after inauguration day, because so many of his tweets right now seem so very, the best is yet to come. He seems so certain that Trump's gonna win an election that he lost two months ago. I also love this tweet. Georgia is not a blue state. I mean, putting aside exhibit A, there are a lot of states that really aren't red or blue states. Uh, and the electoral college really helps strip away any nuance. Louisiana was blue in 1992 and in 1996. West Virginia was blue in 1988. California was red in 1980 and 1984. How Orwellian, huh? It's almost as if changing populations and opinions and a higher than average voter turnout can change what color an arbitrary piece of land on a map is. This tweet from the 7th is definitely intended to be very, uh, sit down, you loony leftists. He's still the commander in chief, you buffoons. But it also serves as a piece of honest journalism. The fact that he has to explicitly say, hey, this guy's still the president, kind of gives you an idea as to the temperature of the country and lets you know that when people woke up in the morning, they weren't going to be sure if someone was fired from being the president. So here's the video that I was referring to earlier where he made a similar point. Uh, it's the pinned video on his Facebook page. I was on the roof of my building in Los Angeles and I was looking around town and the whole town was on fire because of radical BLM domestic terrorists. But what was more bothersome for me was the fact that no one wanted to condemn it. Actually, rather, celebrities were egging it on. As glass was thrown on my street, thugs burned my local bakery to the ground. The thing that bothers me the most is that he wants to sell himself as an everyman. You know, someone who lives on good old Main Street in any town USA. But he's also a young person in the age of social media. So you know, we gotta see him flexing in a Gucci shirt. Him flexing that he's going to one of California's most prestigious brainwashing institutions known as a college. Him flexing that he was gonna be on TV, which like it's fine to flex about all these things. It's when you flex about all that stuff and then you go, oh my God, there was glass in the streets of Los Angeles. This truly is the end times. Also, his dad is worth $12 million putting him squarely out of touch. Change your name to policehaters.com because that's what you do. You hate police. You're not about police brutality. Ooh, he really got the radical left there. How long do you think he was brainstorming that one? Hey, why don't you change your name to, I think the police are not that good. No, I don't like that. Can we get another take of that one? Hey, why don't you guys call yourselves little bitch ass cucks who want to burn America to the ground? Yeah, I, yeah, that's, that's too strong. I felt that. Um, and also like we censored Chrissy Teigen's tweets earlier on in the video. So I, I think it's incongruent if I then cuss. Yeah, it's okay. You police haters are not the bomb.com. You want to be the bomb.com? You're more like police haters.com policehaters.com, holy shit, we got it. Can we, let's roll, let's roll tape. I also love how they show policehaters.com like it's an actual website that they want people to go to. I checked it out and it looks like a Medicare scam. We have a certain culture here. We have a culture of freedom. We have a culture of self autonomy. The left refuses to acknowledge that some cultures are better than others. I don't want to live in Saudi Arabia where gays are being thrown off buildings. I don't want to live in Yemen where women are getting stoned. If you come to our country, you need to do things our way. This is America. This is our sovereign free country against communism. Because we all know Karl Marx famously said, Communism is when you throw gay people off of buildings. I also love that if you scroll through the comments of this video, 
Uh, every single profile picture is either a white person, a truck, or an American flag. And lastly, here's a vlog of his from December when Trump had lost the election for like a whole month. I've been on the front lines. I've been talking to voters. I've done all that. And I know for a fact that Donald Trump's impact for the last four years has been insane. Yeah. Yeah, it has been. I know he won, there's no doubt in my mind, and also there's zero doubt in my mind that by the end of this, we will win. I know it, I have faith. I First of all, I just think God has Trump for eight years, done, and if he doesn't, you know, then so be it, but- You can't do that. You don't get to say, I know he won, I know there was fraud, I know that people are engaged in criminal activity to undermine the election process. God has literally ordained this man with two terms as our president, and if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. You know, it's no skin off my back. Anybody who really thinks it's over has not been paying close attention, and they don't really know anything about the election process. It's easy for me to go, ha 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 ha, you fool. I know what happens in the future, because I am from it. I've got hindsight, I've got foresight, and I've got nearsightedness. Anything more than that far away is blurry. Even with all that, my general understanding of elections is you get all the people and you tell them their choices and then they go, okay, and they pick their choices. They pick, 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 pick. And then you count them up, you got count, 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 count. And then whoever had the most wins, uh, or at least that's how state elections work. In national elections, you gather up all the people, and then you tell them all their choices, and then you divide them up again, and then they make their choices, and then you count up those choices, and you whoever got the most choices in a certain spot gets a certain number of points. And then once you reach a certain number of points, then you win. And Joe Biden did that in November, and he had certainly done it by December. Welcome to Starbucks, what can I get for you? Hi, can I do a grande vanilla bean frappuccino? Of course, anything else? No, thank you. Okay, 40 towards the window, thank you. Thanks. Oh gosh, didn't even want coffee, just wanted like a steady break. Um, but another thing, probably my most- This moment is so jarring to me. And I, I know that vlogging already is supremely artificial, but you can edit out the parts that don't fit the artifice. I edit out me messing up lines or drinking water or laughing at my own dumb jokes because it doesn't fit the artifice of this thing that I'm in right now. This is not real life. I wrote down everything I'm saying, including these lines, in the script. I mean, I created a recurring series called Getting Political on a YouTube channel. There's some artifice there. Getting Political is never going to be me going point by point as to why I disagree with someone's policies. That's just not what this is. I'm not here to litigate, I'm here to entertain. And so that's part of the artifice of this. You know, it's much more fun for me to go after the ridiculous ways in which someone goes about doing something than to go, well, actually, according to a 2016 FBI study, people who do that are important, but I am not that person. And neither is the person who this video is about. We are entertainers. So please take everything with a grain of fucking salt. It's been a hard day. It's been a hard week. It's been a hard month for people who haven't given up faith in President Trump. You've got a big storm coming. So that's... I think one of the biggest tells of his character is this tweet. Um, he deleted it, but then he posted it on Parler. But now Parler's down, because that's its own fucking flash in the pan weird thing. So we'll see if, how, and when it manages to make a comeback. But to go back to that tweet, you don't get to build your brand as a political personality and tweet a bunch of political things, and then when people go, hey, I disagree with you, you go, hey, just, just leave me alone. You deserve not to be harassed. Absolutely. As does everybody. And if people are harassing you, that should stop. But when you build your brand as a political personality, 
and a divisive, antagonizing instigator at that. And then when you tweet something, people are a little mean to you. You don't get to say, just leave me alone. You want to get a reaction and you want to stir the pot. But as soon as someone does that shit to you, you come back with your tail tucked between your legs. And it's kind of sad. Also, it's social media. You want to be left alone? Put your phone down. Turn your notifications off. You're left alone. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you now feel the urge to go type something at this person, don't. Uh, you can type it in my comments, and that's fine. Or you can bully me instead. I can take it. New year, same me. If you forgot what the shirt that my sister gave me says, it says my name and it says subscribe. So you could subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm almost at a whole hundred followers, which if it's true, if you look this up, it's not that many. I, I'm not gonna wear this shirt outside, Susie. I'm sorry, I can't. Again, thank you so much for watching uh, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.